Well, we made it. Week 11 of the NFL season is finally over. It's over. It's upon us. We finished it off. We've gotten a lot of good laughs, a lot of good times have been had. And the Jets are the first team eliminated from playoff contention. Good job, Jets. Good job. By the way, the Jets lost, so there, there's no reason to talk about that game. But let's start on Thursday night. Of course, we had the Seahawks taking on the Cardinals. NFC West matchup. Division lead on the line once again in this division. And the Seahawks did a lot on defense. They did a lot. They, they really kept... Um, the cards contained from most of the night. You know, Russell Wilson was efficient. You know, the offense was efficient. The defense did what they needed to do, including a sack on Kyler Murray at the end of the game. And the Seahawks are, you know, they're right in the thick of things. Of course, um, you know, there's still a little bit of season left to go. And... The Seahawks do have to take on the Rams one more time, you know, but I think, you know, I think if the Seahawks can continue to play like they've been playing and not, you know, play so bad on defense, like historically bad on pass defense, I think they'll be fine. Steelers, another dominant performance, just what we've been expecting from them against, you know, bottom tier competition against the Jags, and they beat the Jags 27-3. Nothing really to see there. P.J. Walker, in his first start, shuts out the Lions. And the Panthers, they're kind of still in the mix of things as well. Of course, you know, it's a long, long, arduous road to get to the playoffs. Of course, but the Panthers win another game. Texans, they beat the Patriots 27-20, so, so the Texans finally have another win on their resume. I'm so glad that the Browns beat the Eagles because it was a rough, rough day again for Cleveland as far as the weather goes. The weather was absolutely dreadful again, and I mean, taki-taki for the Browns. I mean, uh, he got a pick six on them got a pick six on Wentz. I mean, Wentz threw it like a, a couple of bad interceptions in this game. Just bad. Just, this game was off for the Eagles. The Browns did just enough once again to take care of business and just get on up out of there with the victory. It is just enough. You know, there's still a little bit of concern I have for the Browns, especially, you know, because there's no Odell, and now Jarvis Landry has to step up, and so does o and so does Baker Mayfield. Baker Mayfield didn't really do too bad against the Eagles. He's just got to do a little bit better next time. He's got to do a little bit better. But the main – hold up. Hold up. Still got some stuff here. Yeah, yeah. Um, Joe Burrow. Yeah. MCL, ACL tear. Done for the year. And guess whose field it was on? It was on Washington's field. And people have been saying for years, oh, well, Washington needs to fix that field up. Yeah, they need to fix that field up. Of course they need to fix that field up. You know, rough injury. And the Bengals, just to add insult to the injury of Joe Burrow, they lose to Washington 20 to 9. And now Washington is in great position thanks to the Eagles' loss. And we'll talk about who else is in great position in a moment. Taysom Hill got the start for the Saints against the Falcons, and it was pretty much an easy game for him. You know, he ran for a couple of touchdowns, you know. I mean, while Drew Brees' recovery, you know, Tom Brady can overtake the um, pass touchdowns record that, you know, the announcers and stuff have been going have been, gush, have been gushing about for like three weeks now and he Tom Brady will indeed do that <laughs> um but yeah as I mentioned the Jets they lost to the Chargers um eliminated from playoff contention probably going to get the number one pick in the NFL draft and probably unless somehow by a miracle they get a W somewhere they're going to go with 16 but the real big game at noon was the Titans and the Ravens. And the Ravens really, um, 
I don't know what to say about the Ravens. They're, they were, they've been in kind of a funk lately, and they need to get it together. Well, unless COVID decides to cancel the Steelers game first. But um, they need to get it together, you know, before the before whenever they get to play their next game. I'm not sure if it's going to be on Thursday. Um, but the Ravens, you know, they did not look particularly the greatest. You know, when Derrick Henry... You know, does what he does. He did it to you. He did it to you in the playoffs last year, and he's gonna do it again. Walk off touchdown in overtime. And I mean, the tight. I mean, the Ravens pretty much had the Titans where they wanted them for about three, three, three and a half quarters. They really had them where they wanted them. You know, you know, Derrick Henry wasn't doing too much. You know, the offense. You know, they were keeping up the Ravens, but then you know, things just started happening. And I mean, just some, just some awful, questionable play calling by the Ravens at times, you know, and and just some rough defense to watch when you have Derrick Henry bulldozing guys every play, you know. In a surprise, you know, the Broncos beat the Dolphins. Very surprising. The Dolphins have had a lot of momentum again. Any given Sunday, Tua got pulled from the game. In came in Ryan Fitzpatrick again, who probably shouldn't have been pulled in the first place. But hey, the Dolphins are in the playoff hunt right now, so I don't know. But yeah, the Dolphins maybe overlooked the Broncos a little bit and took an L. You know, can't can't say much else than what it is. My Dallas Cowboys. Let's talk about them. Um, probably one of the better games this season, I'm not going to lie to you, between us and the rushing leading, you know, Dalvin Cook-led Minnesota Vikings, and of course Adam Thielen went off, you know, he had some spectacular catches in this game as well from Kirk Cousins, and Kirk Cousins threw for 300 yards, was damn near perfect the entire game, so of course you know the Cowboys defense couldn't stop anything, but it was the offense of course, that really picked up C.D. Lamb. Good job, brother. Good job. You know, just absolutely fantastic out there on the field on Sunday. Andy Dalton looked like, you know, the Andy Dalton that started for Cincinnati for years and years. He looked like that guy. Everything was coming together. And this also gives the Cowboys much needed momentum. And so Thanksgiving, Washington, Dallas division lead. It's gonna be glorious. Gonna be great. And in a big time, you know, matchup between two teams who don't get together very often, the Colts defeated the Packers. And let me tell you, there were turnovers. Lots of them. <laughs> Lots of turnovers in this game. <laughs> I mean, I can't recount how many fumbles there were in the first quarter. There were like two or three in the first quarter alone. And, you know, the Colts really, really relied on their defense to win this game. That's what they needed to do. They needed to rely on their defense, so they got it done. They got it done in overtime, of course. And, you know, you know, just some bad plays by the Packers and, and some penalties, too. You know, really cost them. It really cost the Packers everything in this game. Now, of course, this doesn't really change anything in the NFC North, you know. Uh, Packers still lead the division by a wide margin, so. But we'll see, you know, which Packers team shows up Sunday night against the Bears. Oh, boy, that's going to be rough to watch. But on the actual Sunday night game, which was a thriller, the Chiefs outdo the Raiders in Las Vegas. Now... Of course, you know, just some terrific play by Derek Carr, but you can't leave Patrick Mahomes enough time. You can't outshoot the Chiefs like that. You have to limit them. And this wasn't the case like it was in the first matchup. So these two teams were neck and neck pretty much the entire game, and it came down to the last possession. You can't allow that to happen. You really can't allow that to happen. <laughs> and meanwhile... About 10 to 15 minutes ago, obviously, the Rams 
beat the Buccaneers 27-24. Jared Goff did pretty damn good, aside from the interception, of course. Tom Brady struggled again. You know, he he threw 40-something times in this game, so that's an indication that you probably should be throwing 40-something times in the game to win it. And he threw a couple of bad interceptions. We're talking really bad, especially the one to end the game just now. Just really rough, you know. Jared Goff hooked up with Cooper Cup I don't know how many times during this game. And it felt like, you know, it felt like the Rams had the game in the bag. But they kept making, you know, mistakes that, you know, that that that, that really kept the Bucks in it. Like, like, you know, just before Brady threw the interception, they had, you know, the Bucks had two minutes left to win the game. And you know... You know, he may, he may not be retired yet, but Tom Brady is one of those guys that can take his team up down the field in less than two minutes. He's that he's that kind of quarterback. You can't do that. You, you know, the Rams, they got the pick to win the game, of course, and the field goal by newly signed kicker Matt Gay to win the game, but you can't. Could have been could have been disastrous. Could have been disastrous for the Rams. But the crisis was averted. The crisis was averted. So that is going to do it. Week eleven gave us our first elimination of the seasons. So we can just completely I mean, every week we just have to talk about the Jets, no matter how bad they are. Yeah, I mean, come on. But yeah, the NFC West is still wide open. The NFC East is wide open. Everybody in the division has three wins. You know, no more Joe Burrow. So what will the Bengals do? No Drew Brees for maybe another week or two for the Saints. How will they fare? Um, you know, what can and what in the world, who's going to stop Pittsburgh? You know, I've seen, you know, stuff like, well, they're overrated. And I know I've said this, too. I've kind of said, I've kind of implied it. But, I mean, the Steelers do have a history of playing down to the competition. That's just fact. They just have a history of doing that. You know, playing down to inferior teams that have less talent than them. And their biggest win of the season was the Browns. That was their most complete game. You know, you can't really count a game against the Bengals, and you can't count a game against the Jags. Those are not playoff teams. Their most complete game of the season, their most dominant game of the season, was against the Cleveland Browns, a team that's probably going to the playoffs. Maybe. They have to play complete football against good teams, and they have a lot of big tests coming up due to Steelers. So they got to they gotta play, you know, exponentially well and I think that should do it yeah yeah that should do it so yeah week 11 done and week 12 you know the preview will be coming tomorrow so look out for that along with the college football playoff rankings reaction look for that tomorrow as well I'll see you all tomorrow